Imagine the silent dunes of the Sahara, hiding secrets of the past. Among the scorching sands, debates still rage. Could an ancient civilization have once existed here, leaving behind mysterious traces? Some researchers suggest that changes in the Sahara's landscape are not only the work of nature, but also of a highly organized culture. <laughs> they point to strange straight lines and shapes visible from space. Could these be the remnants of dried up canals or walls dug by intelligent hands? Or are they simply nature's whimsical patterns? Today, we will try to unravel this mystery using science. And in the end, we will take a look at the legendary Atlantis, which might turn out to be closer than you think. First, we need to understand how to tell natural formations from the works of ancient engineers. The Sahara Desert is vast, crisscrossed with countless cracks, dry channels, and geological faults. Some run for tens of kilometers almost in a straight line, for example, tectonic faults or dried riverbeds. On satellite images, such lines can easily be mistaken for artificial canals. Often, enthusiasts on the internet post images of a perfectly straight line crossing the desert, and the imagination instantly paints an ancient canal or road. But our eyes can deceive us. Natural cracks have distinctive features. First, context. If a canal lies in a depression between hills or runs along a slope, it is most likely a dry water course or a fault. Second, shape. Natural channels are usually winding with changing width and branching paths. Man-made canals of antiquity, for example, irrigation ditches, may be straighter, but usually only in short segments, forming a systematic network. Even advanced civilizations did not build completely straight main canals stretching hundreds of kilometers without bends. Water itself tends to meander. Third, bank structure. Our field team searches for traces of reinforcement, dams, or masonry. If a line is just a depression in the bedrock with no signs of processing, it is probably nature's work. There have been cases when ancient canals turned out to be modern. For example, a regular pattern seen in satellite images might actually be the result of salt mining or geological surveys. Without field evidence, artifacts, remains of settlements, one cannot assert that a discovered line is artificial. That is why we treat the hypothesis of ancient constructions in the Sahara with cautious curiosity. Science must determine what is nature's work and what is the creation of intelligence. Suppose that in the distant past the Sahara was indeed inhabited and cultivated. Why then do we not see pyramids or roads, as in Egypt? Here we must remember, Earth keeps secrets, but not forever. Natural disasters can erase entire cities from the face of the planet. Earthquakes have destroyed stone palaces to their foundations. Jungles have swallowed temples, and desert sands have securely entombed oases along with everything in them. Floods and deluges are especially destructive. Practically every people in the world has legends of a great flood, a divine inundation that destroyed the old world. More than 250 such stories are known. Some describe the whole earth sinking beneath the waves. Others tell of a giant wave engulfing an entire country. Modern scientists doubt that there was a single global flood, but they agree that in different epochs, powerful local floods did occur. We need only recall the end of the last ice age about 12,000 years ago. Glaciers melted and the ocean rose by tens of meters, flooding coastal lands. These catastrophes could have been seared into humanity's memory explaining the similar myths found from Mesopotamia and Greece to the Americas and Australia. For our story, the important fact is that the Sahara, too, went through catastrophic changes. Once green and rich in water, it turned into a barren desert relatively quickly, about 3,000 to 5,000 years ago. If an ancient civilization had existed on its lands, it could have been destroyed by a climatic disaster, drought or flood, with the remains scattered by wind and water. Moreover, most inhabited places would have been located near water, river valleys, lock shores. Imagine what is there now, either shifting dunes or salty dried up basins. Finding artifacts under them is incredibly difficult. But nature could have left indirect evidence, and indeed it has. Rivers once flowed where dunes now stand. Scientists have long suspected that the Sahara was not always a desert. On the contrary, during the Neolithic subpluvial, the African humid period about 10,000 years ago, 
It was covered with savannas, lakes, and rivers. Various studies, from excavations of ancient campsites to satellite imagery, have confirmed that the Sahara once bloomed. In the soil, researchers find pollen from tropical plants, bones of hippos and giraffes, animals that can only survive where there is abundant water. And images from space reveal the desert's ancient geography. Beneath the sands lie the outlines of dried up lakes and riverbeds. Entire branching river networks once lay where there is now a sea of dunes. The Rishit structure, with its enormous concentric rings visible from orbit, stands in this transformed landscape, a reminder that what we see today is not what always was. Whether the straight lines near it are nature's handiwork or the legacy of human hands remains one of the great mysteries of the Sahara, and perhaps a key to understanding whether Atlantis, as described by Plato, could have had a foothold here. Satellite radar, capable of seeing beneath the surface, has detected straight-edged channels of ancient riverbeds buried under sand. What first seemed incredible has now received scientific confirmation. The most impressive discovery is the Tamanrasset River, a gigantic system that in ancient times crossed the Western Sahara. Its existence was proven in 2015 thanks to satellite data and drilling samples. In one location, directly in the middle of its former channel, there is now a gold mining pit. Imagine this, a river with numerous tributaries rising in the Atlas and Ahagar Mountains, flowing across what is now Algeria and Mali all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. At its mouth, it carved a massive canyon. Today submerged beneath the sea, about 100 kilometers off the coast of Mauritania. Scientists named this river Tamanrasset and determined that it dried up around 5,000 years ago, though the latest evidence suggests it may have disappeared much more recently. The scale of Tamanrasset is staggering. Some estimates put its length at over 2,700 kilometers, with a drainage basin of about 2 million cubic kilometers and a width rivaling, and in places exceeding that of the Amazon. If it flowed today, it would be among the largest rivers in the world, comparable to the Nile and ranking in the top 10 largest river systems on the planet. It's no surprise that life once flourished along its banks. Herds of animals roamed, forests grew, and for the people of that era, it was a paradise for hunters and fishermen. Later, as drought gripped the land, the people of the Sahara turned to herding and gradually abandoned these drying lands. So far, no direct evidence of an advanced civilization along the Tamanrasset River has been found. There are no known cities or irrigation systems, perhaps the people of that time lived in small tribes and moved with the seasons. Still, water always draws human settlement, and the scale of this river system invites speculation. What if settlements are still lying in wait beneath the sands? The river's discovery is very recent, and its former path remains little explored. Interestingly, the dry riverbeds of the Sahara all point in the same direction, west, toward the Atlantic Ocean. The Tamanrasset itself carried water straight to the sea, emptying into what is now the Bay of Argon off the Mauritanian coast. One could say that where there is now barren desert, there was once a fertile Atlantic-facing land. This detail has not escaped the attention of researchers studying the myth of Atlantis. Plato wrote that the legendary Atlantis lay beyond the pillars of Heracles, the Strait of Gibraltar, ruled over Libya, and reached as far as Egypt. Its capital city was arranged in rings of water and land, surrounded by fertile plains, with mountains to the north and an outlet to the sea. For centuries, the story was considered pure invention. Then, in the 20th century, with the advent of satellite photography, a giant circular formation was spotted deep in the Sahara. It became known as the Rishit structure, more famously the Eye of the Sahara. Nearly perfect concentric rings, about 50 kilometers across, are clearly visible from space. Where did it come from? Geologists determined that the Rishit structure is the result of magma pushing upward from deep within the Earth, followed by millions of years of erosion. Layers of rock weathered away to form rings of varying colors. Officially, it is a natural geological phenomenon, not an impact crater and not ruins. Yet, the more facts enthusiasts compare, the more the similarities to Plato's description stand out. First, the dimensions. The diameter of Rishit's innermost ring is close to the 23 kilometers Plato gave for Atlantis's central ring. Second, the surrounding geography. To the north of the eye lies the Adra Plateau, 
a match for Plato's mountains to the north. Third, the geology. In the Rishid area, there are rocks of three colors, black basalt, reddish sandstone, and light quartzite, and Plato wrote that Atlantis's walls were faced with stones of white, black, and red. And finally, the rivers. Some scientists believe that a massive ancient watercourse, possibly part of the Tamanrasset system, once flowed through this region, nourishing the surrounding plain. If we imagine that 10,000 years ago the eye of the Sahara was not desert, but sat amid green valleys and flowing rivers, the scene begins to look worthy of Atlantis. Plato also claimed that Atlantis was destroyed about 11,500 years ago by a catastrophe in which, in a single terrible day and night, the island was swallowed by the sea. This date coincides roughly with the end of the Ice Age and the rapid rise of sea levels. Theoretically, a massive tsunami or a series of storms could have struck the coast of North Africa at that time. There is evidence that enormous waves did, in fact, surge deep into the continent. On satellite images of the Sahara, long parallel streaks can be seen. The traces of fast-moving water flows stretching hundreds of kilometers from the coast into the heart of the desert. Some researchers associate these erosional bands with a mega-flood that could have inundated the Rishit region with ocean water, transforming a fertile land into a salty wasteland. In this context, the Rishit structure takes on an air of mystery that transcends geology. It stands at the crossroads of myth and science, a place where satellite data, ancient climate change, and Plato's words meet. Whether it was once the heart of a great civilization or merely a geological marvel, it forces us to look again at the Sahara not as an eternal desert, but as a land with a deep and dramatic history, one that might still hold answers beneath its sands. Plato wrote that the place where Atlantis once stood, after being submerged, turned into an impassable mass of mud and shallow waters, where ships could no longer sail. Here, too, we find a striking parallel. West of Mauritania, along the coast, stretch vast shallow banks, covered with sand and silt. Perhaps this is the ancient delta of those very rivers, now mixed with ocean deposits. Of course, this remains a hypothesis, though supported by intriguing facts. Many scientists are skeptical, arguing that Rishit is a unique yet entirely natural formation, and Atlantis is either a myth or a symbolic tale. They point out that over millions of years, erosion can sculpt far stranger shapes, and that other Rishit-like analogs are simply understudied. They also remind us that 11,000 years ago, human civilization was, according to mainstream history, still limited to scattered tribes, far from building any kind of megacities. And yet, what drives us is not blind belief, but healthy curiosity. Too many coincidences and unanswered questions are concentrated in one place, in Western Sahara. Not to investigate them would be a missed opportunity. That is why our team is setting out on an expedition for answers, and we invite you to join us. The first stage will take us to a place many already call the Cradle of Atlantis, the Rishit structure, the very eye of the Sahara. It lies deep in the Mauritanian desert, in an almost uninhabited region. Ahead of us lie hundreds of kilometers of sand, scorching heat, and wind. But the goal is worth it. We will examine the concentric rings with our own eyes, take rock samples, and search the surface for anomalies. Or, if luck is on our side, even artifacts. The second stage will be even bolder, a maritime expedition into the Atlantic Ocean. Remember the giant Tamanrasset River that once flowed into the ocean? We intend to explore the area of its ancient mouth. Today, this location lies in open water, about 100 kilometers from the modern African coastline. There, according to bathymetric maps, lies a large underwater canyon, likely the channel of that very river. The depth in this zone is shallow, around 15 meters, making it accessible for diving and detailed study. Amazingly, almost no one has searched here for traces of human activity. The ocean floor off the Sahara remains largely unexplored. Our plan is to reach the coordinates of the ancient channel by ship, then use an echo sounder and side scan sonar to map the seafloor in detail. We will then deploy an underwater drone equipped with a video camera. It will allow us to examine the sediment directly. Perhaps there are preserved structures, remnants of ancient deposits, pieces of wood, or even artifacts carried by the river thousands of years ago. 
In addition, we will collect seabed samples. Perhaps in the sediments of the ancient delta, we will find plant material or traces of fresh water, evidence supporting the story of a great flood. This investigation could shed new light on whether the African coastline experienced a major inundation at the end of the last ice age. Our expedition is scientific in nature, but the spirit of adventure is very much alive in it. We invite you, our viewers and fellow explorers, to join us in this thrilling quest. Soon, we will report from Mauritania, showing you the eye of the Sahara in all its mysterious beauty and sharing our first discoveries. Then, we will move aboard a vessel in the Atlantic Ocean and lower our cameras into the depths, to the place where the Tamanrasset River once met the sea. Perhaps, just there, lie the still unanswered fragments of our human story.